Hey, it's that time again. If you've been keeping track on your worm abacus, you'd know that we're on game number four of our FNAF plushie journey, which not only means we have to look at a whole lot of teeth now, but we also got a pretty hefty chunk of new characters thrown on our plate, 15 in total between base FNAF 4 and its Halloween update. As to not take another millennium getting this video out though, I decided to split FNAF 4 in half like I did with 2, so the number of Fetty Fabos that we'll be covering today is just 7. I'm not going to give you the whole spiel about what the series is for like the fifth time though, so go watch the others and get caught up if you don't know what's going on. But if you don't want to, I guess then, uh, don't. Before we jump right in though, as always, just a few quick things. Regarding the last part, I'm excited to say that, hey, I actually don't have any mistakes to address this time around. I know, right? It's a goddamn miracle when this girl does something correctly. But Ty, you did make a mistake last time. You forgot about Phantom Golden Freddy. I had a good amount of people telling me this in the comments last time, and I assume what y'all are referring to is this nameless greenish Freddy thing that has a rare chance of spawning at the edge of your office in FNAF 3, only officially referred to as a crumpled Freddy suit in the Freddy Files book. However, given its purple tone when brightened, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is literally just Shadow Freddy made to look kind of green by the lighting of the office, and he has already been covered. Yeah, not a mistake, but I do appreciate you guys all trying to pitch in anyway. And hey, speaking of you guys pitching in, I just want to take a quick moment to show off some of the rad shit you all have made in reaction to this series, because it's really cool. Some of you have taken some of my designs and modeled them, which is really rad. Like these ones that look strangely real at a glance and actually fooled a lot of people into thinking they were photos of real plushies. Some people tried their own hand at fixing some plushies of other characters or making entirely new ones in my style, which is also really fun to see. Someone used my Shadow Bonnie design in a Friday Night Funkin' mod of all things. I didn't expect that one. Guys, I just got freaking jump scared by Bizzy Bizzy. And some people have actually taken on the monumental task of making these plush creatures into real things. Yeah, there's been quite a few people who took a crack at making these silly guys. They're all seriously amazing. If you want to actually watch the process of someone doing this too, I seriously recommend you check out these two videos created by May Rose OS, where she actually documents the whole process of turning my Mangle and Withered Bonnie into real plushes, which both turned out adorable, by the way, and also discusses each of my designs individually based on her own insight as someone with actual plush sewing experience. This was really cool to watch, as this kind of insight is like the main thing in the series that I'm unable to provide myself. I love seeing this stuff, so I just wanted you all to see them too. Thank you for making cool shit, everyone. Anyway, time to take a little trip down to Teethtopia. So, the Nightmare Animatronics. A name that does not describe how scary these guys are, but does pretty accurately portray how I've imagined designing these plushies would be since the series' initial conception. Yeah, so I'm not really a fan of these designs, at least not as much as I enjoy the others in the series. I'm not really breaking any new ground with this take. It's an opinion that's held by a pretty good chunk of the fandom, I'd say. You know, the whole thing about how adding a ton of teeth and gashes to a monster design isn't the effective horror shortcut that edgy middle schoolers think it is. It's okay, edgy middle schoolers. I get you. I've been there. Despite holding that opinion myself as well, though, I don't outright hate these characters. They do still hold a special place in my heart, as I have a lot of enjoyment and nostalgia for FNAF 4. They can kind of look cool in some renders too, I gotta admit. This does not change the fact, however, that these are going to be a bitch to stylize into cute plushies. Like, if you thought the Withers and the Phantoms were difficult with their higher detail density, just look at these things. So, how am I going to go about this? Well, uh, drinking was my first idea. <laughs> It became apparent very quickly to me while working on this that making these guys cute in a more conventional sense would unfortunately require the accuracy and, well, recognizability to take a massive blow. Almost all of the important aspects of their respective designs that make them unique are the exact same aspects that make them spooky, so removing too many of these would result in something that doesn't resemble the nightmares very well, and at that point, why are you looking for a plush of these guys just by any of the other counterparts of these characters that already exist. So I decided I would have to aim for a different type of cute for these nightmare plushies that, while a little less conventional, will hopefully still be present for those who enjoy these characters. This specific type of cute that I'm talking about is more of a, well, 
You know when certain dogs, like usually small lap dogs, snarl and bare their teeth, but instead of looking scary or vicious like they probably do in their head, they just end up looking really goofy and circle back to being cute again? That's the kind of vibe I'm going for here. As far as all that withering and such goes, we're going to continue to utilize the good old stitching method started with the withereds, but now kicked up another small notch to hammer in the fact that these are the most damaged and decrepit we've seen these mascots so far. So, let's put all of this into action with our first animatronic, why don't we? I lost three of my babies! Tragic. I've got triplets myself. I don't know what I'd do if I lost them. Good thing I'm a responsible parent. You should try it sometime. As this is one of the animatronics from 4 that did receive a Funko Plush release, I think talking about how awful of a job they did would be a great place to start. Yeah, we're getting into the real rancid shit now. Their nightmare attempts aren't nearly as bad as the twisted animatronic ones they made later on. Uh, thankfully, I'll never have to talk about those in detail, but these are definitely a rung below those on the ladder of bad. As you can see, this Freddy has the exact same base as FNAF 1's, bright colors and all, now with the lamest attempt at nightmarification I've ever seen. If you recognize this duct tape looking grin, that's because we've seen this method used before on Funko's Mangle plush. It arguably makes more sense for the nightmares than it does for Mangle, to be fair, but still is a horrible way to portray their sharp toothy mouths. We still have that blotchy withering effect here again, which still looks really cluttered and unappealing. Especially how he has these two giant black shapes on his snout, but none anywhere else on his face. Just makes him look like he got into the nail polish cabinet again. The eyes are the worst looking aspect to me here though, with the metallic eyelids and solid red pupils, neither of which can be found on the in-game design. Wow, I love just making shit up for fun. Overall, this has got to be the absolute worst one I've covered so far. It doesn't get any worse than this. I mean, it, it does get close. The design I ended up with has almost no resemblance to Funko's at all, so prepare yourself for a small bit of whiplash here. Okay, so as usual, I tried to capture the big landmarks of each character's shape the best I could in a simplified and stylized manner, and for Nightmare Freddy, this mostly came down to his jaw. His head isn't actually that far off from OG Freddy here. The main difference is that the lower jaw is... Well, open now, of course, but also a lot larger and with a super distinct cleft in it. I tackled the sharp teeth in essentially the same way as Withered Foxy to give him a sharp toothy grin, but in a much softer and goofy way. His nose is also the same type as the two Foxies with the nostrils instead of the plain smooth surface. All of the Nightmare's eyeballs will be this gray shade instead of the usual pure white like they are in game, with the pupils being each of their respective eye colors, just with these stark white centers and shines like they have on the models. Also, the eye rings surrounding them are now the full black instead of just a darker shade of their base color, because if anyone is going to have that detail, it's these guys. His colors are obviously a good amount darker than OG Freddy. That's arguably one of the most important parts of this design, so it's still insane to me that Funko's version neglected the fuck out of that one. And the other super important part, the wither stitching. I decided to keep the amount of stitches for the nightmares about the same as spring traps, but with most of them being a bit longer to really hammer in how torn apart they are compared to any other animatronic. I sectioned off a piece of dark fabric with a stitch on his chest just to mirror that big endoskeleton revealing hole Nightmare Freddy has right there. And finally, I added these three black stitches on the end of the plush arms to kind of hint at the idea of those sharp blade fingers that are unique to the nightmares. And that's almost done. I have one more surprise with this guy to show you. Yeah, he's got a little magnetic Freddle shoulder buddy. I thought it would be super cute to give him one as a little accessory, just like Chica and her cupcake. The simple Freddle is just a head with minimal detail on a tiny body and tiny arms, so when you stick him on the magnetic spot on his shoulder, it kind of looks like he's popping out of the tear in his body, like that one render. So yeah, there's Nightmare Freddy, and one of his sons. I just got screamed at by Freddle. I'm so mad about this. Just like the cupcake, Freddle gets to have its own plushie as well, in addition to the mini version on Nightmare Freddy. This one does not have a Funko variant, which is a huge loss on their end, as I'm sure a lot of people out there would love to purchase three of them to have on their bed. But whatever, uh, sucks for you, Brian. This is what I came up with. 
These guys have tiny bodies, so I gave them a torso that's thinner than our default shape, with arm and leg nubs similar in size to our endo plushes. This naturally makes his head look larger in comparison, giving him the teeny tiny proportioned look. His head and face shape all match closer to the in-game model, with this super wide rectangular jaw and snout. We have the flat circular eyes and seams around them that we do for all the characters with the pitch black eye holes and white pupils, of course. And we have the wither stitching again. The three amigos actually have completely different withering patterns between them, so I just kind of picked one randomly to base it on, which ended up being uh, this one. As these aren't nearly as badly withered as the nightmares themselves, I reflected this with less stitches overall, making sure to keep the longer ones in the important spots. And yeah, that's a freddle right there. Now, time to get scared. I'm gonna get scared. I'm getting scared. I got scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Since I did Freddle, I figured I might as well go ahead and knock out Plush Trap here, as he's similarly a small little dude. Once again, he's. <clears throat> he's not. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, just a smaller version of, of sp Spring Trap. God damn it, am I just completely unable to talk about anything Springtrap related? Is this a curse or something? Once again, Plush Trap isn't just a smaller version of Springtrap. In fact, he's got a lot of differences to reflect in our plushie, which I, the real Oof Troop, will point out as we go. As you can see, he's got this small segment in snout and a super wide jaw, with a similar curved shape to Mangles, with an open jaw that's especially important on Plush Trap, as he's insinuated to be a finger trap type toy in game. His ears actually have three segments instead of the usual two for the bunny characters, so this was also done here. And given that they're folded over in almost every render of him that exists, our plush is the same. Plush Trap was also given the same body and limb shape that our Freddle has, as they both have similar proportions and are supposed to, like, look small. And since his withering is minimal, we just have some tiny little stitches scattered all over, with some condensed on his snout and eye rings. Oh, and his colors are slightly brighter and more yellow than Spring Traps are, of course. There, done. Did it for you. Wow, uh, maybe try harder next time, Ty. If you keep freezing up like that, people are gonna unsubscribe. Later, loser. Okay, it seems like they may still be upset about the whole shape-shifting into and impersonating them thing. <laughs> that didn't happen. This isn't real. We, we did a YouTube collaboration that they voiced in. We wrote a script where... We pretend- are, are you that stupid? Did we pull the wool over your eyes? Are, are you that stupid? Right on to the next bunny. But watch out. I heard that this time... It's a scary bunny. The shape differences between Bonnie and Freddy are a lot less subtle in FNAF 4 than FNAF 1, so the plushie should ideally be the same way. So let's see how Funko did the- it's, it's just the FNAF 1 plush with shit slapped on it again, goddammit. Weirdly, instead of putting the same type of withering patterns on his body, they instead just changed the shape of the lighter parts to look all bent and irregular, which like gets the point across, kinda, but still looks short. The funniest part about this one to me, though, is how you can see the black splotches on his face and the withering effect on his ears and stomach, and you're like, okay, he's all torn up and stuff, and then you turn him around and see the back, and it's just, just like one little mark on his head. So yeah, we can do better, me thinks. Nightmare Bonnie's head is taller and thinner than Freddy's, with his huge jaw taking up more of that space, so I made sure to mimic that here, basing it sorta on how we did our withered Freddy head shape. Nightmare Bonnie's model also has the three segment ears like plush trap, so I did that again, this time with one straightened ear for a variety's sake. His snout has some little freckles and whiskers coming out of them, which was fun to add to the plush. And as Nightmare Bonnie also has some huge chunks missing on him, on his head and his chest and stomach, I sectioned off some dark fabric with stitches once more. A pretty notable aspect of his design in-game is how much more of his endoskeleton is visible through that body hole, so to give a similar shape language to the plushie, I added an extra stitch going down the center of it. Alright, another complete. Okay, so the first night is never usually that bad in any of the games, so I'll play through- What the fuck?! What the fuck?! 
So this is technically another original. There isn't any Funko Nightmare Chica plush to speak of. Kinda. There is a Jacko Chica plush, who is, of course, just a slightly edited Nightmare Chica model. So we may as well take a look at this one, huh? They gave her gums. Oh my god, they gave her gums. Nightmare Chica is definitely my least favorite design of the four. If I were to pinpoint the main reason why, it would probably be that she differs the most from her FNAF 1 design compared to the others. She just doesn't really feel that much like a Chica to me. I, I don't know, just adds to the nasty look in my opinion. Because of this, I predicted from the beginning that this one would be the most difficult, and I definitely ended up being right. This one was tough. I tried my best though, and got something that I'm pretty happy with. Everything is pretty self-explanatory here, just wanted to mention that she has a different hairstyle from the other three chicas, just like the model. The bib is smaller and meant to look torn apart with the way it's shaped. These aren't actual tears or cuts in an otherwise solid piece of fabric as that would cause thread unraveling. And Nightmare Chica's most iconic detail, the heterochromia thing she's got going on with the solid white right eye and the regular red left eye. And that's actually not it either, of course not, we gotta have the Nightmare Cupcake. This one is pretty much the same as FNAF 1 Chica's, just with darker colors, our nightmare pupil type, and the black eye rings. I also used another fake black stitch running along the base horizontally to act as a fun little simplified mouth, instead of actually putting teeth in everything here. So yeah, there she is. I think I did a decent job, but out of the main four in this video, this is probably my least favorite plush result. I'm obviously pretty biased though, I'm, I'm sure the nightmare Chica heads watching will be able to tell me how I did. The cupcakes are always the most boring parts of these videos, so I'll, uh, I'll try something a little different this time around to bump up that entertainment value for you all. Funko's Nightmare Cupcake Plush Out of all the nightmares, this is the best looking and most accurate, I feel, but once again, ain't saying much. For mine, as always, I wanted to move away from the flat printed mouth thing, but I didn't really want to use the usual plastic supported open mouth this time. This plush is essentially just a head, and making that work structurally in this case would be a bit difficult, so I decided to cheat for once and have the top and bottom jaws be completely separate pieces, but with a black cylindrical plush center running through it, so it's just a gap going around the base part with black showing and the teeth filling that space in the front. If that doesn't make sense, you probably get the picture by just looking at it. Everything else is essentially the same as our OG cupcake, just with our usual nightmare details added and all the colors changed accordingly. Done and done, there we go. And that's how I fixed. Okay, that brings us to our last plushie for today, and I just gotta warn everyone beforehand so you're not all disappointed. It's not Bedside Pill Bottle. I know, I know, I'm, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, fuck. Uh, if these don't look good to you, I got nothing to say to you. They look pretty right. good. They look kind of burnt. Did you, you like drop them in dirt or something? Burnt? Did I drop it in dirt? No. Grow up. I'm not at all surprised that Nightmare Foxy was one of the esteemed FNAF 4 few to receive a Funko plush. He's like the fan favorite of the game, I think, but what's also not surprising is that he looks like this. Once again, I don't feel like I really need to explain why this looks gross in detail. You, you have eyes. I will actually give props to them for including the exposed endoskeleton part of his snout. It just kind of feels like a detail Funko would forget, I don't know. And here's my finished design. This one is a bit more complex, particularly in the this area, but I think it would be fairly doable on a plush. Take that with a grain of salt as always though. As you can see, he's got two layers of snout here. There's the smaller black part with some gray fabric and stitching to act as the exposed metal framing, and a chunk of outer fabric to act as this torn up light red part. The lower jaw and general shape of the mouth is once again very similar to what we did with Toy Foxy and Mangles, just larger and wider. The nose is actually a little roundish cube this time, like the model has. The shorts are the same ones we gave Withered Foxy, but darker, as the amount of withering is pretty close to being the same, and I didn't want any more detail in that general area anyway. The legs actually have the little finger-esque stitch lines as well, because Nightmare Foxy's legs are just the endoskeleton, with those spiky dogs fully on display. We have all our wither stitching as well, with some more sectioned off color areas, and the eyes. As you can see, he actually has two rings encasing his eyeballs, which we haven't done before. The model in-game has the lighter, salmon-y red of his snout and cheeks going around the dark void eye sockets, so I really didn't have any other option if I wanted to keep both of those details. 
Also, here's something I would have never noticed if I wasn't closely inspecting these models for this video. For some reason, Nightmare Foxy's pupils are different than the other three. I mean, obviously Chica has the one white eye, but aside from that, they all have the same colored pupils with the glowing white centers, except for Foxy, who has little dark centers. So I did the same for our Foxy here and gave him the regular black pupils. And that's pretty much it. Not. There you go, bitches. His weird, freaky tongue from that teaser that isn't actually in the game anywhere. Of course I had to include it as a magnetic accessory. This would just be the regular plush material with some bendable plastic on the inside so you can shape it around a little and then stick it to a magnet in his mouth. I would leave it off personally. I don't want to plush gear hemming me from my shelf, but to each their own. And there you go. <laughs> That's all the plush shitsters I got to show you for this episode, though. Making the nightmares was a pretty huge undertaking, but I feel like I managed to pull through pretty well. If you have any opinions as to how well you think I did, definitely let me know down below, though. Especially the Nightmare Chica stands watching. Come on, speak to the class. That's half of FNAF 4 knocked out, so next time we'll take on the Halloween update critters. And these two guys as well. I, I don't know, they're probably important or something, right? It'll probably be a while before then, though, so if you're one of the FNAF-only viewers in the audience, which is okay, by the way, uh, everyone's got their content preferences, I do urge you to maybe give some of my other stuff a shot just to see if you like it. If you like these art accompanied types of videos I do and also happen to be a fan of Smash Brothers, you might get a kick out of my other series where I fix boring fighter alts. Or hey, if you love learning about little secrets and obscurities found in games and also like video game music, you'd probably like my music secrets and trivia videos. Hell, I even have YouTube poops on my channel if you're a fan of those. If not though, I understand. You can find something else out there to do to pass the time while you wait. You can, uh, poke at the ground with, like, a stick, um, find some cool worms or something, uh, I don't know, um, take some, uh, estrogen. <laughs> And as always, I'd like to thank my scrunklies over on Patreon. Thank you for supporting me. Spider Bee, Goose Dog, Jewy, Prism, April Bee, Creative JK, Adelaide Parade, Malin, Soy Sauce Flavored Tide Pod, Galaxy, Chico Mode, Catterall, P. Oliver, Schmooms, Bargain Snorf, Frigid Duck, Zealous, Rubbish Bunny, The Siderian, Goji Dragon, Awesome Ace Z, Xeno Dude Face, Wunga, Toast Omatsuri, Pomlantine, Lily Swartzlander, Just Jenny, Fedco, Zaysir, Wilfred MF Worf, Daniel the Spaniel, Certainly Cecilia, The Papini Bros Emporium, The White Sludge Monster, and Kanachansan. If you'd like to join these wonderful folks, you can check out my Patreon in the link in the description. Anyways, thank you all for watching and peace out. What's going on guys? Don't go back again. Hope you are fantastic today and welcome to Buckley's Bunker.